When I look at them more closely, I realize they are all vampires. Liam eased his massive in your Hi guys, I'm Noreen and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be reading out some cringy One Direction fanfiction. Okay, but first of all, I hope everyone's doing okay. Um, I know that MCO has sort of become a little bit easier for everyone. I just finished my semester and I'm super relieved that I have time to myself now so I've been reading my books and I finally get to start on this video. So I'm using my phone to record so I am going to be reading them from my iPad so sorry about that if the light glares on my face or something. So I used to be a huge One Direction fan and I would read all sorts of fanfiction which to me at the time were really good. But these are some that I haven't read yet and I just skimmed through them to make sure they're okay to read. So just a warning in advance, some of these can get kind of racy um, and you know not safe for work. Um, so yeah. So the first story I'm gonna read is Bad Boy LP, Liam Payne. Liam Payne from One Direction. Woo! Woo! Liam was known as the bad guy at school. Mean, did drugs, bad grades. He was just out of control. When he makes his move, you will fall for his charms or be the first to reject him. You're walking through the halls, well, more like running. You'd been late five times this week, and you knew the teacher wouldn't tolerate a sixth time. There are only five days in the week. How many days of school do you go to? Hey baby, you turned your head to see Liam leaned up against the lockers. Leave me alone Liam, today's not the day. You growl back at him, flipping your hair over your shoulder, turning away. Someone gripped your elbow and slammed you against the lockers. Hey now your name. You can't hide forever, Liam whispered. I'm not that bad of a guy, he said, brushing his soft lips on yours, and you smelled the scent of mint on his breath. You gulped hard before squirming out of his grip. Now I'm gonna be late, all because of you, you said, annoyed, not wanting to focus on what had just happened. You rushed off to class hurriedly. Ah, miss, your last name. You decided to join us. Detention this afternoon. Maybe this'll teach you to be on time. Your teacher boomed, writing your det detention slip as you sat in your seat, slumping down. Class had ended, and you were on your way to the room where detention was being held. You walked in and gave your detention slip to the lady at the desk. Have a seat in the front row, she directed. You took a seat and sat your bag on your side. Am I the, am I the one one? Am I the only one going to be here? You question, looking up at the woman. No, we have one more student coming around. He should... Ah, there he is. She smiled, looking at the door. Liam walked in, with his backpack hanging off his right shoulder, his coat in hand and attention slip in the other. He turned his head and looked at you, smirking. But you turned yours as well, not wanting to face him. You felt uncomfortable under his gaze and was happy when he stopped staring and sat in a seat in the, in the last row. Now you two listen. I've had a bad day and I'm exhausted. I'm gonna trust you two to be mature while I go take a nap, she said getting up. As soon as the door shut, Liam moved to the desk beside you. Hey sweetie, he cheekily grinned. You rolled, you rolled your eyes but ignored him. I'm not that bad, your name, really. Give a guy a chance. <laughs> He said. So you can what? Leave me hanging after you get what you want? You boomed. No. Oh, sorry. He says no. Yeah, right. Oh, I'll show ya. He got up from his seat and grabbed your hands, pulling you up. What are you doing? You asked. I'm gonna show you. Show me what. He smashed his lips on yours, kissing you roughly as he plunged his tongue into your mouth without warning, exploring every inch of your mouth. You tried pulling away, but it was no use. He was stronger than you. You kissed back, running your hands through his buzz cut. 
I knew you couldn't resist, he mumbled as you two stood there making out. His hands moved to the hem of your of your shirt, tugging it up. You disconnected your lips from his You disconnected your lips from his, taking off your shirt. Jump. He whispered. But okay, the thing is, she ends the sentence with the dialogue part, but then she continues it in the next paragraph. So it's like jump. Next paragraph, he whispered, placing his hands on the back of your thighs. You jumped up, wrapping your legs around his waist before connecting your lips with his. Liam walked over to a table that was in the back of the room and laid you down on the table before discarding his own shirt, letting it fall to the floor. You looked at his body. He had abs, muscles, and a tattoo on his collarbone. You like? He asked, noticing you're staring. Mm-hmm. You nodded, biting your bottom lip. He chuckled lightly. Liam kissed your lips lightly this time. Moving his hands behind your back, he unclasped your cheetah printed bra and sliding it down your shoulders ever so smoothly. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm liking what I see as well, he whispered to himself, but you heard anyway. He bit his lip, staring down at your boobs. You're so hot. He pinched your left nipple lightly before taking the other in his mouth. He sucked on your nipple before swirling his tongue around it, making it harder than it was before. You let a soft moan escape as Liam moved to your other nipple, sucking and licking it like he did the other. Whilst he was sucking your nipples, his hands moved to your belt and began to unbuckle it before pulling down your denim jeans and off your legs. Wait, Liam, you said, stopping him. I, I don't want to have pointless sex with you, then you leave and act like it never happened. You admit it before it could get any further. Your name, I really like you. I couldn't do that to you. I wouldn't do that to you, I promise. Liam said sincerely, and you knew from the tone of his voice and the look in his eyes he was telling the truth. You absolute fool. I'm assuming she's in high school, cause... Okay. You smile, kissing him again, and he smiled into the kiss. I mean, no offense against high school students. Okay, adults make these mistakes, but how naive can you be? Okay, anyway. You sat up licking your lips. I'm only in a thong and you still have your pants on. Sounds unfair to me. He laughed but kicked off his shoes and slid down his black jeans. You both were left in your underwear in, your underwear in the room. You could see his hard on through his Calvin Kleins and you started to stroke his cock through his briefs. He let out a moan before you moved your hand. He pulled out one of the blue hard chairs under a desk. Sit here, he instructed as you got up and sat in the chair. He took off his underwear and stood in front of you so his cock was right in your face. You instantly knew what he wanted so you grabbed his cock and blew on the head. The cool air hitting his cock made him groan. You knew how much he wanted his cock in your mouth but you continued to tease. You licked the head slowly, removing some of the pre-cum. Your name, don't tease, he groaned. You smirked but took his massive cock in your mouth. You gagged on his length, making him moan out in pure pleasure. You moved your head back and forth, making sure to use your hands and make up for where you couldn't get to. Your name, please baby, don't stop, he moaned. He moaned, his head fell back, eyebrows furring together, mouth gaped open. His moans filled the room, and you felt his cock twitch in your mouth before he released into your mouth, and you swallowed every drop. Damn, baby, that was the best hit I've ever gotten, he commented out of breath. Your cheeks flushed a light, a light shade of pink. Thanks. In a matter of seconds, Liam had you pinned against a wall, stripping away your thong and throwing it over his shoulder, kissing you as he opened your legs a little, opened up your legs a little. He ran his fingers over your pussy before licking two fingers. You're so wet, your name. Who made you this wet? He asked, inserting his two fingers with ease, pumping them in and out. Your eyes closed and your mouth had a slight O shape. Le Liam, you moaned. He pumped faster and it was just too much. Liam, I'm gonna come, you moaned. He pulled his fingers out and licked them. Not yet, baby. He laid you back on the table horizontally and climbed on top of you. Have you ever had sex? He asked. Yes, w once, you answered, embarrassed at your answer, because he probably had sex many, many times before. 
Don't be embarrassed, love. He smiled, brushing some of your hair behind your ear. You pecked him on the lips, smiling. Liam eased his mouth. I'm sorry, this is really awkward to read. Liam eased his massive cock in your pussy, easing it in and out, going at a slow pace. Liam, faster, you groan. He smiled wide before thrusting at a, pa at a faster pace, then picking up speed, ramming his cock into you. Oh god, Liam, you screamed out. The only thing that could be heard was skin slapping against slip skin and both of your moans. Fuck, I'm close, Liam said, placing each arm on the side of your head. You let one hand rest on his bicep as the other ran across his back. He th his thrust got sloppier and soon you felt his liquids fill you up. After that you came as well and you both moaned each other's names and profanity as you rode out your orgasms. A sweaty Liam laid next to you on the table, pulling you into his arms. I told you I wasn't that bad, bad of a guy. Could you give me one chance? I really like you, he asked. And you nodded your head, smiling, kissing him on the lips. As cringy as that was, that was the shit I was into. But by the time I sort of discovered smut, I had sort of moved from One Direction to Five Sauce. And I still liked One Direction, but I preferred Five Sauce smut. And okay. Anyway, the next story is. It's a Twilight and One Direction fan fiction. I sigh as I close. This thing about the story is really weird. Bella, Bella is obsessed with One Direction, but okay. I sigh as I close my notebook. It has pictures of One Direction all over it. What I want most is to go to a One Direction concert for my birthday. I guess technically, I guess I technically don't have a birthday anymore since I am a vampire now. But still, I wanted to go. What do you want for your birthday, Bella? Edward asked. We are all gathered in the living room and everyone waits to hear my answer. What I want for my birthday is to go... <laughs> Alright, I'm not gonna do that. Is to go to a One Direction concert, I say uneasily. I wait for them to burst into laughter, but they do not. Instead, it is Edward who does. You like One Direction? He chokes out between laughs. Yes, why are you so surprised? I ask him. I just thought you have good taste in music, that's all, Edward says. They're good. Also, you have to grab my wish, so buy me some tickets, I demand. Okay, okay, calm down, he reasons. Thanks, sweetie, I say sweetly. I then turn around and go back to my room to look at my pictures of them. I've never read Twilight, but does Bella really talk like that? Thanks, sweetie. I only watched one movie and I barely remember what happened. I walk downstairs, actually being excited for my birthday. Hi everyone, I greet. Hi Bella, ready to open presents? Car Carlizzle? Carlize? Carlizzle us? Sure, I say, and head to the living room and sit down. Everyone has a package in their hands, although Edward's is an envelope. Me first, Alice chirps. I take it and open it. It is a stack of gifts, gift cards to different stores. Oh thanks, Alice, I say smiling. Edward is lost. Here, he says, and gives it to me. I slowly open it and find two sheets of paper in it. Okay, and then there's just crap about her getting the tickets and going to the concert. So now now it's, it's after the concert, right? That was the best concert experience of my life. We get out of our seats and look for backstage. Where do you think it is? I ask Rosalie. I see it, it's right there, she says triumphantly, pointing at the door that says backstage on it in big letters. We start walking towards it when I'm knocked down. I barely have time to scream before I hit the floor. Someone is on top of me, and they must be pre pretty strong to knock down a vampire. I feel the weight lift off me, and I just lie on the floor. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, are you okay? An Irish accent asks. I quickly get up to see Niall Horan staring at me alarmed. Yeah, I'm fine, I say. I'm talking to Niall Horan. I'm so sorry, I didn't watch where I was going, he apologizes. It is then I noticed something wrong with him. His eyes are now burgundy and he smells like a vampire. He is a vampire. Are you going backstage? He asks. I just nod. I'll show you guys the way, he says, smiling sweetly. I follow him to backstage. 
I see all the guys once I'm in there, talking to Rosalie. Guys, look who I found, Niles says. I step forward and they take me in. Hi, they all say at the same time. I swear, if I could still blush, I would be. When I look at them more closely, I realize they are all vampires. Not only can I smell it, but their contacts are faded and their eyes are now red. Hi, I see you've met Rosalie, I say. We talk a lot more and I find out that they were changed just a few months ago when they were walking to the bus from a concert. We tell them our story and they understand. They do not hunt humans, they just drink donated blood. We still have not found somewhere to stay, Niall whines. You guys can stay with us, Rosalie suggests. Why would One Direction not have somewhere to stay? I mean, if they have a concert, wouldn't they have arranged a place to stay? But okay, for the sake of the story, for the sake of the story. You guys can stay with, with us, Rosalie suggests. Really? Liam asks. Sure, we will just have to tell the others. I pipe up, feeling left out, even though I have been doing most of the talking. Rosalie flips out a phone and dials a home phone number. Hello? Carlyzel's voice asks. It's Rosalie. Listen, Bella and I have a surprise for everyone when we get home. You cannot think about it around Edward. One Direction is coming with us. One Direction is coming with us to stay with us, Rosalie finishes. Really? Are they vampires? Carlyzel asks. That's, what a strange question. What a strange question to ask somebody. Carlyzel asks, Yes, but do not think about it or steer clear of Edward. We want it to be a surprise, okay? Rosalie says. Carlyzel says okay and then Rosalie hangs up. You guys can come. Follow us to the car, Rosalie says. They follow us. Me constantly talking to Niall. He's so fun and sweet and funny, it is hard to resist him. We reach the car and Rosalie is driving. Liam is sitting next to her. Zane, me and Niall are sitting in the middle of the car and Liam and Harry are in the back. I am sitting in a car with One Direction. I can't believe my luck. Especially that they are vampires and are immortal like me. We pull up in the driveway, driveway and Rosalie gets out first. She opens the door and I hear everyone greeting her. Guys, Bella and I have a surprise outside. But you cannot freak out, got it? She, she asks. They all assure her that they won't. And I say, that's our cue to get out of the car. As quietly as possible. We all get out, me leading the way. I knock on the door since it is locked and wait for it to open. Rosalie opens it and I walk in, the boys following me. The reactions are mixed. Edward's mouth drops open. Alice squeals. Esme looks like she wants to hug us all. Carlisle is not surprised. Jasper is emotionless and Emmett stops sobbing. Emmett, what's wrong? I ask. I'm being replaced, he sobs. By who? I ask. He nods at Harry. I then realize that Harry has curly hair, muscles, and is famous. Yep, you're getting replaced, I say smiling. Does everyone know the guys? Rosalie asks. Yes, but perhaps we should introduce ourselves. Alice suggests. Yes, this is Alice, Jasper, Carlisle, Edward, Esme, and Emmett. I introduce. Esme engulfs the boys in a big hug. Welcome, she says, and then releases them. How long are you guys going to be staying? Carlisle asks. Well, actually, our manager said that we are taking a break from tour for three to four months. We should have stayed in Harry's house, but <laughs> but it burned down. Liam says, That's horrible, Edward says sympathetically. Yeah, it was. My family burned with it. Harry says, Why are they doing this to them? <laughs> you right? Okay, okay. Before we can say anything, Alice engulfs Harry in a hug. It is surprising to see it is surprising to see that as she is so much smaller than him. You can stay as long as you want, as me says. I show them to their rooms and they put their stuff in them. I feel so bad for Harry. I miss my family and they're not even dead. We all head back downstairs. Everyone makes great friends with the guys. Emin and Harry are best friends. Edward does not seem to like Niall much, even though I am great friends with him. Esme says Louis is the son she never had. When Edward, Emmett, and Jasper complained that they were her... Esme, Esme says Louis is like the son she never had, okay. When Edward, Emmett, and Jasper complained that they were her sons, she said not, none of them were interested, interested in shopping. Zane is best friends with everybody. 
Liam is best friends with Edward. I really am glad that Rosalie and I went to the concert. I walk into the kitchen where everyone, where everyone is and sit down when Edward, Edward comes rushing in. We have some mail, he says. From who? Carly Zoll says. The Volturi, Edward finishes. And that's the end of the chapter. So I hope you guys enjoyed cringy One Direction fanfiction. I'm sorry I didn't cringe enough to them because I read the beginning in advance just to make sure it was cringy enough to read. And I remember seeing this one thread where it was very it was it was sort of like a remake of all of all of the fan fictions, Justin Bieber, Five Sauce, One Direction, and it was really funny, but I can't find that thread anymore. So if you guys know where it is, if any of you guys have bookmarked, could you like send it to me? And yeah, I've been doing okay. I hope everyone else has been doing good as well. Um, hope you guys are keeping active, especially for those who are stuck at home. Um, I think, I'm not sure if things are safer to go out or not now. I'm not sure if they're just opening things to fix the economy. But if things are safe, there was this meme. I'll share it. There was this meme that was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone's doing okay. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I follow a couple of One Direction. I don't fuck with them. <clears throat> you don't fuck with one deep bitch. <laughs> no. Oh my god, I think someone's died. That's so horrible. Buy no control on iTunes.